Look into my eyes. Did you see that? I punched in, but I didn't keep the same eye line. This happens all the time in YouTube videos, even with some of the biggest YouTube creators out there, like Alpha Gaming, Think Media, Kelly Stamps, Ali Abdal. Now, if you're breaking the eyeline on purpose, you do you, be creative. But unintentional eyeline breaks make your video editing look sloppy and it's disorienting for the viewers to watch. Let me teach you easy ways to keep your eyeline with punch-ins and zooms in Adobe Premiere Pro. Do this first. Click on the program monitor, go to the toolbar, click view, click show rulers, then go back to view and then click show guides. Click and drag on the top ruler, then move your mouse pointer down to bring a guide onto the video frame. Move this guide to the top part of the eye. Then click and drag to bring another one down and bring this down to the bottom side of the eyes. This is going to be your eye line. If you use just one line, it's too specific and when people are talking, they move their heads around. Using two lines gives you a little bit of play. You can also use the keyboard shortcuts control semicolon and control Control R to show the rulers and guides. Method one, cut and scale. Click on the timeline area and then go to where you want the punch in to happen. Cut the clip for how long you want the punch in to be. Go to the effects control panel, then under motion scale, click and hold, then drag to the right to increase the scale, which gives you the punch in effect. As you can see, the eyeline has shifted. To fix this, go to the Y position and then click and hold and drag to the right to go up or go to the left to go down and get those eyes in the middle of your eye line again. Once you get it right, I like to hide the eye line guides and then watch it to see if it looks good. Sweet, a nice punch in that retains the eye line. If you ever need to find a clip with a punch in, then that little FX square turns from gray to yellow when you adjust motion parameters. If you ever want to use this same exact punch in in another part of the video, all you have to do is go to where you want the punch in to happen Make your cuts for how long you want it to be. Then click on the clip with the punch in. Control C to copy it. Then you're going to do a paste attributes, which is Control Alt V. Make sure motion is checked and then click OK. That will apply the same exact punch in effect. This method is fast and easy if you want to do a quick punch in or zoom. It's tucked away inside of a clip, which makes it easy to maneuver around the timeline, which is especially important when you're towards the end of an edit when there's tons of stuff going on. Method two, adjustment layer. Go to the project panel, right click, new item, adjustment layer. Make sure the settings are correct, then click okay. Then rename the adjustment layer. Let's do a 20% punch in. So let's name it 20% punch in. Easy, huh? <laughs> I also like to change the label color because the default color is the same default color when you use text in Premiere and it'll get confusing on the timeline. Drag the adjustment layer down onto the timeline where you want the punch in to happen. Then cut it down to size for how long you want it to be. Now go to the effects panel and search for transform. Click and drag the transform effect over to the effects control panel of the adjustment layer and it'll apply it to it. Click on the project panel, then press control semicolon to make your guides appear. Now in the transform effect, click on the anchor point text and you'll see a blue crosshair appear in the middle of the frame. On the anchor point Y, click and drag it to move this blue crosshair up to the top line of the eye line guides you made. You'll notice the frame has shifted. To fix this, click on the anchor point Y number, copy it, and then click on the position Y number and paste, then press enter. Now you can adjust the scale number. Since we're going with 15%, I'll change this number to 115. Click on the project panel, hide your guides, then go down the timeline and play it back to see how it looks. Nice. In most video editing tutorials, you'll see people adjust both position and scale. I do the anchor point and then copy paste it to position because that way you will only need to keyframe scale rather than position and scale. And when you're doing zoom ins and you want to adjust the curves, it is hell in Premiere to get those curves between position and scale perfect. So instead of dealing with two keyframing things, I only have to deal with one, which is scale after you adjust anchor point and position. Doing punch ins and zooms with the adjustment slayer method makes it easy to spot on the timeline and it also makes it easy to duplicate and put it in other places. If you want to apply the same punch into another part of the video, go to the timeline, click on the adjustment layer, hold down the alt key and then click and drag the adjustment layer to the position where you want the other punch in to happen. Another great way to keep organization is you can keep one video layer just for adjustment layers. So for example, I can make video layer three where all the adjustment layer punch-ins happen. Organization is key in video editing, trust me. 
presets let's, let's go. go let's say you have a client who consistently keeps the same eye line in every one of their videos rather than repeating the process of putting guidelines and adding the effect and adjusting it every time you work on one of their videos you can instead create a preset we'll use the 20 percent punch in that we created earlier as an example click on the adjustment layer then go to the effect controls panel then right click on the transform effect and click save preset name is something useful so since this is a 20 percent punch in we'll name it 20 percent punch in client name and then click OK. You'll find the preset in the effects panel underneath the presets. So then next time you work on a video of theirs, make an adjustment layer, drag it down to the timeline, cut it to how long you want it to be, then go to the effects under presets, drag the preset over to the effect controls of the adjustment layer. You can create a ton of presets for like 10%, 20%, 30%, 40%, 50%, you name it. For a zoom effect, I only have one preset and I'll put an ease in and ease out with the keyframing, then adjust it manually each time to fit what's happening in the video. Alternative method, no presets. Presets are speedy, but a lot of times people don't keep their eyeline consistent from video to video. One way to tackle this is to make presets for each video project you're working on. Another way that I tend to find myself doing more often is I'll nest the video video files first and then put a transform effect on the entire nested sequence then set the eye line for the whole thing here's how you do that these three video files are in sequential order so I can click and drag them down onto the timeline zoom out and then select them all right click nest name is something useful talking head main now go to the effects panel search for transform then click and drag it onto the entire nested sequence Find a spot in the video where they're looking straight at the camera. Then set your top and bottom eye guide lines. Go to the effects control panel and under transform, click on the anchor point text, move that crosshair to the top line, and then copy and paste it to position and press enter. And now to make a punch in happen, all you have to do is go to where you want it to be, cut the clip, then increase the scale amount in the transform. I'm gonna click on the monitor window and hide the guidelines and then watch it back. Yep, looks pretty sweet. Doing it this way is pretty quick and if you adjust the scale amount differently each time, it gives it a handcrafted feel. The downside of using this method is it's hard to see where the punch-ins are on the timeline. So what I do to remedy this is that I change the label color of the clip. Click on the clip, right click, go to label and change it to a different color of your choice. But instead of right clicking every single time, I've changed my keyboard shortcuts so Alt 1 to 0 changes it to a different label color. So you can click on the clip and I press Alt 4 for example and it changes the color. I'm arbitrarily changing the color to whatever just to show you as an example but you can choose whatever color you want and if you keep it consistent throughout the video you can be like okay everything that's a mango color is a punch in. When I want to do another punch in I go to where I want it to start, cut the clip, where I want it to end, cut the clip again, label it to the different color, and then just increase the scale. Once you get into the flow of doing it like this, it's pretty speedy. There you go. That's how you do punch-ins and zooms while retaining the very important eye line.